So God said to Solomon, ask me anything you want and I will give it to you. Thousands of people everywhere across this globe would love for God to say that to them, don't you think? Income inequality, loss of jobs, poor health, food insecurity, they are becoming widespread problems, not only in our country, but across the world because of the pandemic. David Beasley, director of the United Nations World Food Program said the other night, 260 million people are, quote, marching towards starvation across the globe. Ironically, although the United States helps other nations cope with food insecurity, poverty, for some strange reason, continues to prevail in our country. The good news is that there are many, many organizations right here in the Capital District and elsewhere that exist to help people get through these times that are troubling. One good example here in Clifton Park is CAPTAIN. CAPTAIN Community Human Services is a wonderful place that reaches out to young and old peoples alike. Each week, volunteers deliver about 150 bags of groceries to Cheryl's Lodge, located in Half Moon Heights, just off of Route 9. New Testament professor Holly Heron wrote, God does not ignore our needs. God, instead, challenges our material excess, those things that we acquire for self-serving purposes. What do this week's biblical texts teach you and me about these troubling times and where we are to find sustenance. So once again, in the first reading, young Solomon could have asked God for longevity, he could have asked for wealth, he could have asked for power, but he did not do any of those things. He knew he would succeed his father, King David, but Solomon also knew as a young boy that he had very little experience in leading very large tribes. So he asked God for wisdom, wisdom, so he could be a kind king who desires only to serve the people and not his own ego. According to scripture scholar Reginald Fuller, wisdom, the word wisdom in the Old Testament means having good sense, good practical sense, good common sense in various aspects of life, including knowledge of God and knowing the difference between doing good and doing bad things. So Solomon was praying for that kind of wisdom, that kind of understanding. Deacon Andy Grieb spoke about this somewhat last weekend when he asked, are our prayers only intercessory? Are we always praying to God to do something for me? Well, Andy gave a very good sermon and I would add to his thoughts, do our prayers ever bless and thank God for something? We oftentimes say, thank God. How often do we pray for practical advice on a day-to-day -day basis? on how to be a better Christian, how to do what God really called us to do here on earth, how to carry on the work of Jesus of Nazareth, the work that he started, but unfortunately could not finish. And how often do you and I ask God, like Solomon did, for wisdom, the know the difference between right and wrong. Of course, it's natural for all of us to worry about our own welfare, isn't it? Am I sick? Am I well? Am I going to die? Am I going to live? Where is the next payment coming from? 
But there is more to our lives than just that because we all are going to die someday. So what are we doing in the meantime? Lutheran pastor Mary Hinkle Shore, who studies the writings of Paul, teaches us that in nearly every sentence of the scriptures, Paul states this promise that God will never abandon us. God will never abandon us. Now that's comforting, isn't it? The important thing is that if we believe in this presence of God, that God is always with us, never leaves us alone, that strengthens our convictions. It helps us to erase the injustices that negate God's beauty and grace right here on the planet. And we know that we need more of God's beauty and grace. We need less of all the things that are going wrong on this planet today. And this kind of work that you and I can do with faith will assure us that today and tomorrow, generations of people will indeed live in peace and harmony. That's our hope, that things can get better before they get worse. Although we trust in the mercy of God for everything, that's what we're called to do, Waiting for God to solve our problems is neither a wise strategy or a responsible action. God called us to do certain things on this planet, and that's what should give us assurance that God stands with us. The gospel we heard this morning challenges you and me not to pile up the treasures here on earth, the pearls, because we might then begin to focus all of our attention on those treasures, forgetting for a moment about the role that God plays in our lives. Still, young and old impoverished people who live here in Clifton Park or anywhere else on this fragile planet, those people want food and housing now, not later on in heaven. When we think about all the troubles that people have on this planet in terms of injustices, those people wanted to be treated with justice and equity here and now, not after they die, not after they're in heaven. They want some of that treasure now. So what if someone said to you, you are the treasure, you are the treasure. How would you respond to that? How would I respond to that when God says to me, you're the treasure? Would it help us to know that God needs us? Yes, believe it or not, God needs us to partner with God to bring about the heavenly kingdom here on earth. Now that's a very interesting question. We keep praying to God to help us. I sometimes think that God is praying to us. Richard, please help me out now. I need you to be the salt of the earth. I need you, Richard, to be the light to the world. I need you to be a seed planted in the ground that will bear good fruit. Richard, God says, help me out now. The Bible is full of parables, little stories, and we heard one today. Professor of Catholic Studies at DePaul University, Jamie Waters said, and I quote, parables are short stories that help us reform our lives. They teach us by criticizing bad behavior. They are not simply reflections on the kingdom of heaven. Instead, Dr. Waters writes, these parables are directions, directions, guidelines on how to create the kingdom of God here on earth. So to be faithful to God's word requires that all of us reapply God's word to every new situation that confronts us in the church, 
in the world, in society, at this time of history, not when the Bible was written. It is not enough to just listen to Scripture or to proclaim it here in church or to read it at home or wherever you are. What we are asked to do as the body of Christ is to embody the Word of God in our bones and then to put the Word of God into action. Where our treasure is, there will be our heart.